Hello everybody and welcome to the Yes Welder YouTube channel. I'm Nate Beck and today I have the Yes Welder First Desk MP200 multi-process machine and we're going to talk about plasma cutting. Before we start plasma cutting, we have to talk about setting the actual machine up. Now we're going to have to connect all the leads, but first things first, safety first, we're going to turn the machine off. Now we are supplied from Yes Welder with the plasma torch and the ground clamp. So let's switch the camera angle a little bit, zoom in on the MP200 and hook it all up. We're here on the front of the MP200 and we're gonna start connecting our leads for plasma cutting. Now we're gonna need one tool for this. It's gonna be a small adjustable wrench. The air hose for the plasma is gonna go on the far right side. Now with plasma, you don't have to worry about reverse polarity or not plugging things in correctly in terms of negative or positive because there's only actually one way that this stuff will go together and that's going to be like i said air hose in the far right hand side and we're going to tighten that down like that this is going to be the control for the trigger on the plasma torch and that's going to go right next to it and this has a retaining ring right here that we're going to spin on And then lastly, we have our ground. Now our ground is gonna go on the far left that is labeled ground. All right, so now the machine is set up lead wise to plasma cut. So now let's talk about settings for plasma cutting. So on the back of the machine, we have our oil water separator and it's, it's recommended to run about 78 PSI when you're plasma cutting. So to adjust that, we're gonna pull up on the top and spin this to the right to increase or to the left to decrease the PSI. Now this gauge does not read in PSI. They have it reading in KGF and five KGF is about 78. So we're gonna set it there and then push down to lock it in. All right, so we're here turning on the MP200 and we're going to talk about plasma cut settings. All right, so if you have an MP200, you know it is a multi-process machine with plasma, lift TIG, flux core, MIG, and stick. So we're gonna rotate the right knob to plasma and we're gonna click enter in the middle. So now we're at the plasma settings screen. Now amps is the first thing you're gonna adjust. Now for materials up to an eighth of an inch is typically recommended you run about 20 amps. As you go up every eighth of an inch, you're gonna increase 10 amps each time. This machine capacity is at a severance cut, half of an inch. Now a severance cut, you're gonna have some dross and some cleanup on the underside to do. That's pretty thick to do at 40, but the machine can do it. You're gonna have to go slow though and decrease your travel speed of the cut. We'll get into all of that while we're actually cutting though. But for this, we're gonna be cutting some thinner sheet. So we're gonna go down to 20 amps. Now after amps, you have to think about pre-flow and post-flow. So that's how much air is gonna come out before the arc starts and after the arc is finished. And that's gonna be found on the top left-hand side of the screen and gonna be adjusted with the knob on the right-hand side, which we're going to click in the middle. And now we're gonna be there on pre-flow. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna increase the pre-flow to 1.5 seconds. We're going to hit enter. We're gonna turn the knob to the right one click, hit enter. We're gonna adjust the post-flow. 1.5-ish seconds, click enter. Next is gonna be trigger control, 2T or 4T, clicking enter. We're gonna be 2T is we have to hold the trigger down for the length of the plasma cut. 4T is going to be, we can click it, let go of the trigger, it stays on, click it again to turn the arc off. Usually people, we like to use 2T, just hold the trigger down, but if you're doing a particularly long plasma cut, then you would use 4T, just so your, your finger doesn't get too tired. And lastly, there is a memory function on this. So once you figure out what settings you like, you can save it to what memory bank. One, two, three, four, a couple different settings for a couple different metals, and you're good to go. So let's set up some metal. Let's talk about some plasma cut basics. cutting basics before we actually start plasma cutting. So we're gonna need a couple things besides the Yes Welder NP200 and torch. We are gonna need a welding hood. I like this one from Yes Welder because it has a couple different modes. It's an auto darkener, right? So it works the second it senses an arc, it darkens. Now that's now there's a lot of auto darkens on the market, but this one also has other settings such as cut and grind. So that's gonna darken it at a different rate 
to a, a lighter shade than like a welding hood. So this one right now I have it set to shade 10 on the side for welding, which is then shade six for cutting. So because the arc isn't as intense when you're plasma cutting, you don't need such a dark screen and a dark screen could actually hurt you a little bit in terms of like the quality of your cut because you can't see it as clearly as you need to, which is what's great about this is I don't have to actually change any of my settings. All I have to do is click this little knob down to cut. So this is an awesome hood from Yes Welder they have on their website that has that great feature. So I like using that. Second off, I've got the metal I'm gonna cut with the ground clamp on it. Now, when you're plasma cutting, I like to have a guide. So a guide is basically anything. Here's a piece of wood and a clamp. You can use a piece of angle iron, anything straight or that's the shape that you need to make the cut you wanna do. So you can have a real straight, nice, even cut. If you just freehand it, it's like drawing a line with a pencil over a, across a piece of paper, right? If you're gonna draw a line across a piece of paper with no ruler that it's against, you're gonna get a little squiggly. Same thing with plasma cutting. Think of it like that. Think of it like you're drawing on a piece of paper. So if we have something like a guide that we can sit down and then drag the torch along, it's gonna ensure that we have a nice straight, even nice cut and we cannot think about where we're going. We can think about our cut speed, which is really important. So cut speed is the rate at which we're actually moving the torch along the metal. On thinner metals, when we're using higher amps, like this is set to 30 now, cause I like to move a little bit faster. So at 30 or 40 amps on sheet like this, you can move faster and it will still cut cleanly. The thicker you go, the slower you have to move the actual cutting torch. That is because if you go too fast, you're not giving it time to cut through the entire thickness of the metal, which I'll show you here in a second. So besides that, you're kind of just ready to start plasma cutting. Now what I like to do when I'm like practicing plasma cutting is just get some, you know, random steel, some random sheet. You can go to your local metal supply store and ask if they have anything called drop. Drop is something that was cut, maybe a customer didn't need a full sheet, they needed something less, so they cut, the drop is what was left over, and you can usually get drop at your, like a little sheet metal store or steel yard for cheaper than you can buying a full sheet of four by eight steel. So I'm gonna get this set up to plasma cut, and then we're gonna go over some plasma cut basics. to plasma cut we've got our our wood set up here our guide and I want to go over a little bit on the torch here so the tip of the torch is your actual electrode and we have this nice little safety guard here so when we're ready to cut we're gonna flip this up with our finger and then pull the trigger now to set this up what we're gonna do is actually put it down where the tip is touching the metal but we're kind of on the edge and we're gonna pull the trigger and then when we pull the trigger we're gonna hear that pre gas and then when the machine is ready, it's gonna automatically ignite the arc. You're gonna see it blow out the bottom. And then we can start traveling down. It's really important that we start on an edge though, so we get a nice clean start. We're not starting in the middle of a piece of metal, we're starting in an edge. So let's just do that real quick and we can see how that looks. We can see my travel speed was pretty slow. If you're not rushing anything, but we're not going too slow. We're still moving, but we're not ripping through it, right? What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna finish this cut and I'm gonna travel a lot faster and you'll see what happens. So as we can see there, we actually didn't really cut anything. Let's take a close up look. So as we can see, the cut started correctly and then I took off fast and then it didn't give the arc chance enough to blow through the metal and actually get through to the backside. So this is actually not cut metal. It's just a little melted on the top. Now let's do the same cut. I'm just gonna go over right, right where we were and I'm gonna go at a better travel speed and clean this out and then we can talk about what happens if you go too slow. We've got this all cleaned out now, and now we're gonna talk about what happens if we go too slow. I'm gonna finish this cut all the way to the end going really slow.
So here we can see our travel speed is too slow. There's a lot of low speed dross on the bottom. It's looking real icky kind of in here a little bit. It's real sludgy. And we can definitely improve our travel speed on that. So there you go folks, some plasma cut basics for you using Yes Welder's first S MP200 multi-process machine. It's awesome that Yes Welder was able to get a plasma cutter in this multi-process machine so you can flux core, MIG, lift TIG, stick, and plasma. For a home machine, it is a ton packed into a little small box that really does open up the possibilities that you can do at home in your little shop between welding and cutting. One of the things I love to do when I was learning how to metal fabricate was I would weld two pieces of metal together, I would plasma cut them apart, weld them back together, rinse, repeat, really working on your skills, learning how to dial in amps, adjust travel speed, and becoming better all the time. So hopefully this helps you guys out with plasma cutting on Yes Welder's MP200, and until next time, enjoy welding with Yes Welder.